So uh, until I just sets up. Um, so good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Sabit. I'm your moderator for uh, tonight. On behalf of the CPD and Medical Education Committee of the college, I would like to welcome all of you to our November um, CPD uh, CME webinar program. So tonight we have an intriguing uh, uh, topic in store for you, uh, impact of emotional intelligence in general practice and modern healthcare leadership. So as doctors, it is not only important for us to um, understand and manage our own emotions, but also we should be able to recognize and um, influence the emotions of those around us. Uh, for medical practitioners who aspire to be uh, in leadership roles and for those who are already involved in such roles, uh, mastering this interpersonal skill um, will help you to successfully mentor uh, manage stress, deliver feedback, and collaborate with others much more effectively. So before I introduce uh, tonight's esteemed speaker, who will elaborate on what I've just discussed, uh, I would like to mention a few house uh, housekeeping um, rules. Uh, so this is an interactive session, so I would encourage all participants to interact with the speaker. Um, so please ensure that your microphone is off when you're not interacting or asking questions. Um, questions will be taken at the end of uh, the session. You can either ask the speaker directly or uh, message, uh, just type it on the chat and we'll, we'll um, help voice it out for you. Uh, if you are experiencing any technical issues during the session, please get in touch with our webinar administrator, Ms. Dimuthu. So uh, our speaker for tonight is Deshamanya, Dr. Ajay Jayaseelan. I'm sure he needs no introduction. Uh, he's a well-known figure in the general practice circles. Uh, he's got an impressive and lengthy uh, profile. So in the interest of time, I shall just summar share a summarized version with the audience. Deshamanya, Dr. Ajay Jayaseelan, um, his qualifications include an MBBS, MCGP Sri Lanka, MIT BCCT from the UK. He's got an MBA from the Cardiff Metropolitan University in the UK. He's got a diploma in psychology and counseling from the Institute of Mental Health in Sri Lanka. He's got an advanced diploma in teaching and training from City and Guilds uh, Institute in the UK. He's a grade one medical officer at the Nava Gamua Hospital. Uh, he also consults part-time as a family physician and psychological counselor at Blue Cross Medical Center in Rajagiriya. He's a council member of the College of General Practitioners of Sri Lanka. He's an active member of the CPD and medical education, mentoring, social activities, and public relations committees of the college. He's a senior lecturer, mentor, and an internationally certified trainer at reputed universities and educational institutes, both locally and internationally. He is a public and motivational speaker, in addition to being a visionary entrepreneur, has successfully, con um, successfully conducted many uh, corporate um, workshops in the private sector. He was awarded the prestigious Deshamanya title for humanitarian work and is appointed as a treating physician for the United Nations in Sri Lanka. Without further ado, I would like to invite our distinguished speaker to start his presentation. Over to you, Ajay. Thank you very much, Sabit, uh, for that elaborate uh, uh, introduction. And uh, at the onset, I want to really thank uh, uh, my very good friends, Eranti and Sabit uh, from the CPD uh, committee for extending an invitation to basically uh, do a, a, a presentation uh, and uh, uh, being the College of GPs being actually a, a family to me more than anything. So uh, welcome to everybody and thank you very much for being here. Uh, as Sabit actually uh, did tell you, uh, uh, this, this may sound uh, a little bit of a different type of topic, but I guess, uh, you know, it is a relevant and a topic now if you all go into social media, Instagram, Facebook, anywhere, you will find this emotional intelligence being spoken about day in and day out. And basically that has got uh, so much of, uh, you know, a basic relevance now uh, to not only the corporate sector or not only to the mental health sector, but, you know, basically anywhere in any sort of field. And it has a relevance, proven research that it has a big time impact on the health So 
Sorry, I think uh, Ajay seems to have uh, gone off. We will just uh, bear with us while we sort it out. Ajay, I think you should uh, knock off your video because there is a slight delay. Um, so better to knock off the video and just uh, join in using your audio. Yeah, I think uh, that will be the best. Okay, I'll I'll do that. I don't know. I think my reception is a bit out, so I'll 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 do that. And uh, just, uh, I'm really sorry about this. Uh, is it okay? No problem. Thank you. Right. Is it, Sabit uh, is Just waiting for the screen sharing to start. Yes, okay. Now you're on learning objectives yeah. with the target. Yeah. And, okay. And, uh, and uh, my slides are changing, right? It's changing. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. So basically, we will we will um, uh, know have a small idea on emotional intelligence uh, due to the time factor. Just an introduction. The impact and of emotional intelligence in general practice and healthcare sector and basically the competency model of the framework of water. I will just give you a, a sort of an intro 
to build up an interest. And there are so much of stuff to learn in this. Very interesting, right? So this is the basic topic, right? So the definition according to uh, Dr. Travis Battery and Jean Reeves says, right, it's very interesting. Your ability to recognize and understand emotions, just, you know, stress on the first word. It is in yourself and then the others. Now, this is the main thing of emotional intelligence. It's how a person or a doctor in any field understands his emotion first and then knows his place, self and the others. And then continue. And your ability to use this awareness to manage your his, the understanding, the definition itself says that I'm really sorry, but uh, I think Ajay's uh, reception is, is not very good. So please bear with us uh, until he reconnects. All right, Ajay, you're on emotional intelligence slide, on the slide, yeah? yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I mean, I, I did a lecture just a while back, three hours, nothing happened. That's why I'm a bit confused why this is happening. I'm sorry about it. No, no, no. I, I did check and like three hours continuously, I did not even once it got out. The reception is also pretty good. I also don't understand the emotion. So, okay, so so emotional intelligence, if, that, if it goes once more, I think I'll go on my uh, phone on the, on the hotspot and I'll rejoin again. That will be better sure, because, excuse me, because i i did check this last three hours nothing happened i, I don't know why this is uh, playing around now. okay right so so basically um uh, emotional intelligence refers to the capacity right basically for recognize your own feelings and then after that uh you know knowing about the others right managing your emotions and then managing others Basically, for a doctor-patient relationship, this is very important because if you don't understand yourself as a doctor person, right, the ethics of practicing patient-centered care, holistic care, right, being the in thing of general practice, family medicine now, or any, basically any type of medicine is not going to work. That's how the whole concept of emotional intelligence comes into play. I'm changing the slide. I hope uh, Sabit is changing, right? Yes. So the history, I won't go into it a lot. You know, basically around the 1990s, it came in, right? There was a person called D Daniel Goldman. I would like you all to, uh, you know, go on YouTube, check his videos. Uh, uh, he is a very brilliant guy who actually basically brought in emotional intelligence to the world. So it's not a very old thing, but I, I think basically... 1990s, 1995, and it became popular, right? By 1995. I'm changing the slide. You all know, when you look at this, you can see the brain on the left side, right? Okay? How, how you feel, how you think, right? And EQ is how you feel. Okay? And IQ is how I think, right? And on the right side, you have the iceberg theory, right? So the usual thing of the two-third below and the one third on top. The one third on top is something which is portrayed outside, right? You go as a doctor, you go as a leader. The part that actually shows up is your IQ, right? Mainly that is what people see. You go to an interview, yes, that's what you're mainly checking. Right? But now it is proven beyond doubt that any, uh, you know, 
basically feel, even uh, being a doctor, right? Emotional intelligence plays two third, right? Two third. These are research. Um, to tell you frankly, it's not nothing to do that. It's not, nothing of mine. It's all research. Two third of the time, a person's from everything, personality to, to how he performs. Take a doctor. Is built upon mainly the emotional intelligence. Yes, your IQ experience is needed. There's no doubt. Obviously, you can't cannot EQ is there to stay. And I can quickly relate a story to you of the Titanic, right? So you know what happened in Titanic, right? He was like a 50 years experienced captain, right? Who had enough experience, right? And basically on that given night where 1,600 people drowned and died, and you obviously know the famous love story and the story of Titanic, he having 50 years of experience could not do, a, a, do anything to save. The simple thing was nothing major. He did not listen to anybody. Basically, he was egoistic. He used his IQ and his experience, but never used his emotions. And clearly, that man, that day, if he actually used his emotions, intelligent, listened to the few people who came to him running and saying, you know, basically, you, can you see that iceberg goes down, right? You're going to hit that. We're going to die. And he never listened because he said, I know everything. I have an experience of 50 years in this field. Who are you to tell me, right? That iceberg just is on the surface. It's nothing deep, right? And when he came close by, he couldn't do anything because he crashed. So EQ is such like that. The important fact of a person, a doctor, a leader, is also standing on that two-third which you cannot see. So moving on, emotional intelligence, I hope the slides are changing. Emotional intelligence is a better predictor of success in leadership than IQ. This is proven. Again, I want to stress, I am not bringing in a point here to say IQ and experience is not needed. Please don't misunderstand me. Right? It is 50-50, but they are proving more and more that a person's performance in any field is now getting more and more a person using emotional intelligence, uh, you know, as much or more than IQ. So I'm not going to take uh, a lot of time on this. I just want to show that, you know, this thing broke into the field in the 1990s, basically 1995 out. So you all can just read about it, right? Basically, and proved how EQ has such a big impact on a person's life. So what is the difference, right? So IQ is a score which is derived by standardizing tests, right? It's a design to measure intelligence. IQ relates to intellectual abilities, like how well you learn, understand, and apply information. People with higher IQs can think abstractly and make mental connections more easy. Now, emotional intelligence nevertheless, is a little bit different, right? It's using emotions to think and enhance our reasoning, right? It's, it's bent upon the reasoning aspect. Those with high EQ or EI, emotional intelligence, are able to manage their emotions as well as use their emotions to facilitate their thinking and understand the emotions of others. And this particular aspect of emotional intelligence added to the IQ when a person has he has a much better uh, uh, chance, right, or ability to connect with another person. And as you and me are doctors, the main person of being a family physician is your patient-centered care, holistic care, where you need communication as one of the main things, where you need active listening, emotional intelligence, and just use only the IQ and the experience it's not that you will fail, but you can be a better doctor. That's what I'm trying to bring in, or a better leader when you use both. So in this slide, you can see the expertise is the IQ, what you bring to work as a doctor. The personality is who you are. 
basically as a doctor right the beauty of eq is how you make both of your expertise and your personality together to make sure you become a better doctor so that is already there as an answer to you i hope i hope you all get this right uh, i will just keep this just want to tell you the conventional performance versus high eq performance they have done many researchers and found out a leader any field a, a doctor using emotional intelligence has a much higher it's proven it's proven with a lot of studies especially daniel goldman if you go to youtube and uh, you know search for him you know you can find a lot of studies and his uh, you know videos where he has proven and a lot of people have proven this right so now let's talk a little bit about ei so uh, emotional intelligence right um, <clears throat> i'm thankful that the line is stable for now i hope it remains so you know emotional intelligence is utilizing your emotions to determine the right response the right time to the right person so there you go it's the right response the right time to the right person right keep your patient as the person you are with as a doctor the right response the right diagnosis finding out the right symptoms at the right time the correct treatment right to the correct person there you go that is ei and it is emotional intelligence should not be interpreted to something where it's just being nice to a person or you know being emotional it is not being emotion right okay so this is um so i think i'll, I'll get to this later i have another uh, graph like thing which uh, shows this study which is done in the united states according to talent smart i'll get i'll i'll, I'll do it when i have that uh, image a bit later uh, these are simple things i'm not going to take a lot of time so how to be emotional intelligent is your normal thing of being you know thinking about others feel empathizing right being in the uh, position or the or the or, or having the shoe of the other person meaning wearing the shoe of the other person right being a patient right that's very important show authenticity you know you you, you demonstrate the empathy you praise others basically these are things that sometimes we don't do right giving helpful feedback right i mean you give feedback you being emotionally intelligent you give feedback to others right and you know apologize forgive and forget keeping your commitments you know these type of uh, you know sort of qualities right uh, are embedded in actually a doctor or a leader who is emotionally intelligent which you can already see which is very important also to have it with i uh, uh, iq and just only using your iq and experience will only take you to a sort of a level this will make you a part stand i mean you will stand up apart from others right so emotional intelligent person is skilled in four area right i just want to touch upon this now if you are an emotional intelligent a leader or a doctor right basically you will know how to identify emotions now this identify emotions is not only in your patients it's in you how you identify it yourself and then identify the others how you use your emotions to the best of the ability when you are and then after that you understand that emotion and you regulate the emotions right so so this is not an aspect of being emotional to somebody i'm not talking about a patient coming in an old patient coming in very poor patient right you feel pity for that patient and it is not that right emotional intelligence is right in front of you now so this is how you identify you use you understand and you regulate that emotion then mind you as i told you at the start they say that you know decision making is bent upon mainly using your emotions intelligence it's a fact right so by using this as a doctor you actually will diagnose or you know understand your patient and your patient centered care will surely improve 
a, a leader's intelligence has to have a strong emotional comfort. He, she, or she has to have high levels of self-awareness, maturity, and self-control. Moving on. Uh, in this picture, who do you think will be a better leader or a better doctor? I think the answer is uh, straightforward here, right? So a person who is an emotional leader or a person who is an emotionally intelligent, Right? And basically, a, pay, a person who is an emotionally intelligent leader, like I showed that first picture, uh, how the leader uses uh, you know, his emotional intelligence to make sure that he crosses that you know, risky terrain and brings his team in. Right? And that is a leader who actually will win. I don't want to, you know, take sides. I'm not bringing in any politics here, right? But for instance, if you just take, okay, take Sri Lanka or even anywhere else in the world, just think about the leaders that has been there right? and you will see the difference. So the emotional intelligent leader is also called the people's man, right? If I would marry, if you would have heard this, a leader, a president of a country, when he is told, that means that man is successful. And this word people's man comes from being emotionally intelligent, not being emotional and putting out false promises, but being emotionally intelligent and putting out positive uh, promises for the people. Right. So that's the difference. Moving on. Also, emotional intelligence leadership, when you take that, or a doctor, these are some of the basic qualities they have. So effective leaders are aware of their impact on others and use it to their advantage, right? So it's being emotional and they use it for their advantage, right? So, so, so it's, it, I'm not telling to be cunning, but actually if you're emotionally intelligent, you will also uh, have a lot of advantage. Effective leaders have empathy for others, yet can still make tough decisions. It is not sympathizing or empathizing with somebody and saying, Anne, power, patient, balandapo. But then also using that intelligently to make the decisions to make sure that the correct thing is done to the patient, that you also benefit and the patient also benefits. Thirdly, effective leaders are excellent communicators. This is something which is proven beyond doubt. I have seen this with some people who I have worked for this uh, work with also on this emotional intelligence side and they are so good at you know getting people to their to themselves they do it beautifully it, it's a nice art to practice right it's very nice so being a doctor you attracting a patient if you're emotionally intelligent i can guarantee you even as a leader you will have all most of your people in your side effective leaders balance feeling and logic in making decisions right okay it's realistically balancing your feeling and being logical. It's not just being emotional. Effective leaders create personal connections. Now, that is something I think very important for a doctor. For a family physician, you creating personal connections will keep the patient with you, right? They, I mean, that's the whole idea, right? And I think as GPs of family practices, how we have, especially the senior GPs in this forum, will vouch for it. Uh, uh, my father, unfortunately, two years back passed away. He was he was quite a uh, you know reputed GP, and I have seen you know families coming to him for 40, 45 years continuously. And there are some people; most of them just come without anything. There have been some people who come once a week. Even now, they come to me or they call me. They, they, they say they, they just say. We just go to sit and see him. So that is something even, even in the College of GPs, I've seen a lot of these, not only senior GPs, even the uh, you know uh, uh, middle-aged or even the young GPs who are doing well, you all bring in those patients. It's not like you all are going on you know Facebook and advertising saying, I am so-and-so and then getting. No, you are not doing anything. Why? How come they're coming to you? Even if you have somebody in front of you, a much more qualified patient, I'm telling you, they may go once, but they will come back. This is because of the practice of 
emotional intelligence how you are intelligently emotionally intelligent and making that personal connection right even if there are instances i'm sure all of us have gone through i have gone through sometimes they just go off they go missing right a regular patient and then after a while you won't believe after about 2 3 4 months slowly they come back they are they are embarrassed they come back they give some and they come back to you right effective leaders are passionate about what they do and show it that that's that's very important if you are not passionate on what you do basically there is no drive right so to be a good family doctor to be a good leader the passion is very important and this passion is doubled when you actually are an emotionally intelligent being i hope uh, up to now uh, i have added something about emotional intelligence uh, well i don't think i can do a lot because of the time but i will just give you an intro right so now when you take this slide what i want to just show is if you take a, a family physician or a gp or a leader what do they use basically you have technical skills mainly say you run a place right you have technical skills basically your business planning product knowledge computer skills all that comes on the technical side on the other side you have your cognitive skills basically being and you analyze analyzing reasoning strategic thinking these type of things right now the emotional intelligence beautiful what does that say according to this slide i'm changing the slides i hope it's changing it's a combination of this technical and this cognitive skills which become effective leadership which is an a leader with emotional intelligence so basically an emotionally intelligent leader has a combination of all the skills that you need to be uh, to have as a leader so it's it's not only just having the qualifications right being the highest qualified person uh in a hospital or a doctor or no it's like you having i have 30 years of experience so i'm the best right it's all put together so obviously all put together so in this perception if you come to think of it right i'm, I'm, I'm not trying to take uh, i mean prove something here but if you come to take this right some of these young people who just start as gps or family practice how there are some people who catch up that practice who have a much better reputation also unexpectedly right so it is not like you know they have a big building or a board or they they, they have um, uh, electronic health records yes that also adds value but that's a temporary measure permanent measure of getting that grip even at a young age is how these people use these emotions intelligently and i have seen some of my friends uh, practically i don't want to bring in names but there are one or two leading gps i have seen one person again in the candy area right actually is in gampola guy has a practice there who i think at the brown 35 had one of the best practices like even compared to the senior gps in candy and i used to wonder how this is right and then this person actually after that but even before that he used to have this. so you have living examples and i'm just bringing in just to tell right so so in, and this is a saying that i really like they say in leadership the hard stuff is supposed to be easy right but it's the soft stuff that is hard so we have this perception that being a doctor or being a leader it's the hard things that is uh, is is like basically tough and we will be breaking our head and we will be like what is this emotion no 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 it's proven be beyond doubt that any leader even the leader just just think i don't want to bring in examples because i think it's not not good to do in a forum like this but just just think about our leaders our sri lankan leaders a lot of people just see just take examples even of this election i'm just telling you even of this election you just see unexpected things happen so that is nothing to do with so many years of experience that that of the qualification family pharma policy no how come those things happen think about it right so that's how this emotional intelligence has really really come out as a standing factor now and it is discussed in 
most of the forums uh, and and even in healthcare i would say in sri lanka still it is little bit primitive right i mean I'm, i mean i mean there are a uh, uh, lot of uh, awareness programs going on in the health health sector corporate sector emotional intelligence is the thing health sector but in other countries i'm telling especially india and all they are so leading because this is practiced in a very high level they actually take this very serious right and just to add on to it even interviews now in sri lanka they have started but in other countries i'm sure you all know about it right in lot of the other companies even in other countries they actually don't even take your uh, qualifications and check right when somebody comes in they only check about the connectivity the communication connection that person has right and this is proven that some of the companies don't even look at what you have right sometimes you have a phd and the other guy will just have a basic qualification but he gets the job because they see the performance and productivity much higher in people who have this emotional intelligence right uh, let's skip this is our basic stuff and you know decision making and emotion there's a study of dr antonio damasio right so he, he was uh, a, neuro, a, a person who currently he was working right uh, in the neuroscience thing is a professor of psychology philosophy and neurology all that so i know and California, right and he's this researcher also beyond doubt you all can just google and see this because i don't think i have a lot of time to explain this, but he proved how decision making gets affected by emotions in a big way right? and i think i think that is true right i mean in my life i have uh, you know you know fallen for a lot of things being emotionally down and taking stupid decisions i'm telling you right i when i was doing this presentation also i was like thinking of my life just think about your life and see right the decisions that you have made uh, on the contrary the emotions but they always say right when you are down you should never take decisions when you are depressed you should never take decisions it's all bent upon the same reason emotions have taught mankind to reason so this slide just see the last green and yellow stripe okay it's 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 a it's a it's, it's a very good thing for us to see as doctors and as leaders right basically your emotions right lead on to your thoughts negative emotions negative thoughts positive emotions positive thoughts and these thoughts decide your behavior right good thoughts good behavior bad thoughts bad behavior right and you just see the doctors who are reputed and who are spoken about bad finally these three lead on to your performance so just imagine your positive emotions that you have you don't think about it at the start right you we don't think okay i am down today so what nothing is going to happen no you are down in the morning your whole day you can screw up your whole day you can take rash decisions you can be the worst person why unconsciously that emotion that you had in the morning which you think that it is nothing major right hits your thoughts you become negative for morning you go to the hospital negative 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 it just happened to me many times many times right and then that thought again you just drag it you don't want to change it it shows in your behavior people come and say it just happened to me doctor i mukad dada vena thiyenne me pesha va patient ta banina vane right it has happened to me like i don't know i i just talk and i'm like what banina pisu to mam banne ne yana doctor samanya wa it has happened to me many times mehema katha karanne adam the doc me then i realize oh shit there's something wrong today and then without me knowing the performance my performance goes down so this is how you crash people crash unknowingly there are people who have big you know built up huge businesses overnight they become bankrupt right it's simple this is some this is proven right so this is also effective for doctors like us this is the thing that i uh, i showed i told you i'll come back to so this is a study right uh, smart data that it's, it's a study done in us right one of the states i'm not sure fully details but this is a proven study and what they say is in a company basically when they analyze the 
performance and productivity of every section from the director, CEO to even the last guy, right? Basically, an executive, manager level. 90% of top performance were high in, in emotional intelligence. There are ways of measuring emotional intelligence, like how you measure IQ. There are ways, right? Proven ways. So they brought in this fact, and it was proven that 90% of the performance were top performers were high in EQ. Not only that. 20% of bottom performance also were high in EQ. I hope you got that point. How does that become? Right? So these 20% are the people who are pushed out, saying, ah, you're not qualified, men. There are better people to put. What is this? You have only this. Ah, you have only two years of experience. Fine, fine. Just put him out. We have another guy who has five years of experience who has a master. Again, Uh, two years of experience who has only a bachelor's. But then when these guys go in, the guy with the five years, say, whatever, HR or marketing, the guy with the two years and the bachelor's becomes the junior guy. But then he outperforms the other person. And this is proven. Basically why it, he proves being an emotional intelligent, he drives that team better than the person above him who is not at all emotionally intelligent and who only goes by his ego and those rules. And nowadays, you have seen, gone are the days where a leader can just sit in the AC room and just order. And those companies fail. The, the leader who goes with a group, like the first picture I showed you, the leader who walks the talk, he wins. And those are the people who have emotional intelligence. So they say in, a, in, in the US, accounts for EQ account for 60% of success in the world. 60% against to IQ, it's proven. And also they say, this is not a recent study, it's quite an old study, but I just want to show you, people with high EQ on average make 29,000 USD per year more than a person who has uh, no EQ or less EQ. And apparently, these are studies that are proven and made, right? So just want to bring in this aspect to show you that it, the, it's not only connectivity. It's not only being a better doctor or a better leader. At the end of the day, it also makes you a better person. And at the end, you and me, obviously, I know we are in a service-oriented thing, no doubt about it. But it is bread and butter, right? And you being that emotionally intelligent family of a GP or a family physician or a leader, obviously will attract more patients to you and you will earn more. So at the end of the day, it's not only your, I'm not talking about earning, earning, yeah, but it's like benefiting both. You're actually benefiting yourself, giving more service, being a better doctor. And that patient also, even though he spends, he becomes better sooner. So it's a win-win situation. Never let your emotions overpower also your intelligence. This is also something very important. Even though I'm speaking and there are a lot of studies about emotional intelligence and I say it's proven, the people who overpower their emotions to the intelligence part also fail. So the game here is how you balance both as a doctor, as a leader, right? This is the game changer, right? It's not overpowering your IQ and uh, 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 years of experience, right? And saying, I'm a big doctor or something and leaving the emotions. I don't care about this. Or on the other side, it's not like leaving away everything and saying, okay, fine. You know, I don't need anything. Right? Basically, I'm, I, I know how to get the patients through emotions right? and leaving the IQ. No, it is how you balance both. Right? So we'll, uh, this, uh, this case scenario, we'll leave this part. Uh, there are these YouTube things. These are two links that I just gave. But I mean, you can just go in and type uh, Daniel Goldman and or just even type emotional intelligence on YouTube to get some beautiful videos. I'm sure most of you all even would have watched by now. Right? So they explain a lot on, on this stuff. So emotional intelligence can be the game changer 
to high performance and personal leadership. So they have proved beyond doubt that as in any field, now we are talking about a doctor or a GP or a family practitioner or a leader, you are much higher in the game, right? And that is, that, that is proven beyond doubt. Right. So finally, I just will give you a small attribute. I think I have a little bit of time, but I will just give a small thing on this emotional intelligence competency. So this is something very interesting. It has four sort of, it's illustrated as a framework of four quadrants, right? So the first quadrant is self-awareness, right? Basically, what is self-awareness? Understanding yourself. Now, the second part is self-management. So first, you understand yourself, really, then you then manage, right, the other. Self-management. So first you un uh, self-awareness, knowing how to manage your emotions and behave. Self-manage. So the what I want to uh, you know practically stress here is basically it is first yourself. Now, how many of us think even I don't do that? Right? Actually, even I don't do that, right? I mean, I'm not telling you not to help another person. This is not the thing here, right? But basically, if you want to be a good leader, you're leading a team. Right? I mean, you have seen a lot of people fail because what they tell the team, even they don't know how to do it. First of all, you being a doctor, you should know what you're doing before you give an order to another person or before you treat a patient. Then the third thing is called social awareness. What do you mean by social awareness? After you are aware of yourself, manage yourself, then you become aware of the awareness of others. Because then now, you know where you stand. You know where you stand as a doctor. You know your weaknesses, you know your strengths. Right? And when you know your weaknesses and strengths, you will know how to grab your opportunities. And then with this, you know where the threat is. And you will correct that. Or you won't step into a threat. Right? It's, it's basically SWOT analysis. I'm sure you all know what it is. Right? So when you know the strengths and the weaknesses, you know how to manage your patient well. As a leader, right? Or as a person who is having even a small PP or whatever, how do you manage your staff? It's basically in this. Finally, once you are aware of the social, you become relationship management. How you manage relationships with others. So this is called computer. Right? It's called an EI, Emotional Intelligence Competence. Uh, so I'm not going to take a lot of time in this, but it's very interesting. Your, if you're like, you all learn. So basically what is self-awareness, right? To, the ability to recognize and understand your moods, your emotions and drives as well as their effect on others. Right? Knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom. Aristotle. When was he? Aristotle is, when was this, right? So Aristotle has to, spoken about emotional intelligence, not named it as yet, but he has talk, spoken about emotional intelligence a long time ago. It's unfortunate that Daniel Goldman only in 1990 actually realized all this, right? So it, it, it's, it's knowing, I'm sure, even in religions, right? I mean, basically think of all your religions. These are all spoken, right? Okay, so I will not uh, uh, too much go into this. So self-awareness, is something very important. The leaders of self-awareness won't take, you know, stupid decisions. You know, they will encourage and enhance uh, their own capabilities. You know, the self-confidence builds up, right, basically, right? And, you know, the self-awareness part is the ability to monitor your emotions and reactions. So that is the main thing, right? If you can control your reactions, if you can control your behavior, right, you stand, you will obviously earn your respect very soon and stand about about most of them, right? So it's the ability to actually control your emotions, which is the main thing, which we, even I have a lot of issues in that, right? Seriously, I have a lot of issues in that because sometimes, you know, I find it very difficult uh, to control my emotions. And then when I react, you know, it, it totally brings me down. You won't believe within, I have lost my 
I mean, I th it's okay, I'm talking about myself. That's fine, right? I mean, just think about yourself. There are some instances where, you know, I have lost friends. I have, uh, you know, people have looked at me and said, what's wrong with Ajay? He's not like this. Then I hit my head and I'm like, what am I doing today? Right? So that's, that's because I'm not self-aware of myself, right? If I'm not self-aware, I mean, what is the thing, right? Basically. Okay, so being self-aware is very, very, very important, right? And I'll just quickly go through some of the, you know, qualities of how to, you know, be a better person to, to have self-awareness in a better way, right? So basically, you being, you know, empathizing, being adaptable, confidence will build up. The mindfulness, you know, what is mindfulness, right? You forget about the past, live in the present moment, don't think a lot about the future, right? Uh, patience, kindness, you know, I don't want to take a lot of time, but, you know, tips to become self-aware more, right? You have to be open-minded, be mindful of your strengths and weaknesses, stay focused, set boundaries, very important, right? Know your emotional triggers, that's very important, where you will get triggered, so you should control that. Embrace your intuitions. Practice self-discipline. You know, consider how your actions affects others. Very important so that you will correct yourself. And also feedback. Very important. At the end of the day, you ask for feedback because that feedback, they say constructive criticism, right? Only will make or break you, right? I love this quote, right? I mean, I, 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 why? I will explain to you. Self-awareness gives you the capacity to learn from your mistakes. I like the last line, right? We never tell that, as well as learn from your successes. So basically, we always have this point of learning from mistakes, right? All of us tell, you know, forget the past, you know, mistakes, past mistakes are stepping stone to success. But haven't you thought that even your successors will um, uh, uh, make you learn more? To have that ability, if your self-awareness is at a higher peak, only you will not only, because I also wait for mistakes and learn from that. If, when I get success, that's it. I'm like, okay, fine, I'm in. Seriously, I, I have that mentality. When I saw this quote one day, I was like, oh, what am I doing, right? Basically, if I am successful, I should try to learn from that and better that to the next success, right? Okay, so uh, to be emotional intelligent means, again, to understand the powerful emotions of yours and then others and how you handle it. So you understand your emotions first and the others, right? So you have the power to be anything you want with your focus and determination. So with this emotional intelligence, actually, you can see a lot of people using it in the correct way. You actually have a lot of power. It, 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 it looks as if that power, that, that person has inculcated some power. Nothing is just a human only is using his emotions intelligently, right? So uh, self-management, right? I think uh, I will just run through this and finish it. So self-management also the same thing. How you control, direct, uh, uh, redirect, you know, the impulses and moods in yourself, right? Basically, it means think before you act. That's the main thing, self-management. Think before you act. Because once you react, that's it. There's no turning back, right? Once a doctor is, uh, you know, they come and talk. So that is, that does not mean that that guy is the worst guy on earth. He never uses emotions intelligently. He may, he uses emotions emotionally and basically ruined it. But actually he's a nice person, right? So that's called self-management and an, an uncontrolled emotional outburst. Even though it may make you feel better temporarily, on the long run, it is not. So they always say, don't go for temporary uh, things, right? They always say, life is temporary. True, everything is temporary. But you always should think in the long run because if I react like this, what is going to happen uh, to me later? Right? So that's self-management. Right? Take control of your self-talk, you know, basically the social awareness. What is that? The ability to understand the emotions of the people you deal with, meaning the patients, your staff, your nurses, 
your attendants right okay your junior doctors these are the people you work with day in and day out and mind you this is also the same for your family it's not only your work think about it social awareness right i mean there are so many uh, things happening in this world and you know how domestic violence divorces separations all these things have increased basic things these are the things that are not there even in that relationship communication gap so basically these are the things that will hold on your families right so it is it, it's, it's very simple is nothing high five in this right it's how you are aware right basically you know uh, these are the things the social awareness and then finally so basically these are simple things i'm not going to take a lot of time you know being social aware and finally it is a relationship management and when you do all this finally proficiency in managing relationships and building net and the ability to find common ground and build rapport basically it is that whole thing coming together at the end what how do you build that relationship with your patient that relationship with your staff your nurses that relationship that is everlasting and this is the same thing even between a husband and a wife between of of, of you know parents and children between you know people you know siblings people break out why simple thing is this the proficiency in managing relationships and building networks communication and ability to find that common ground this is the game changer you know basically you will hold on you will become that talked upon home name gp how simple stuff and these are the things that unknowingly people like you know our senior gps people who are, they used to do and we have examples right i mean there are so many examples even in the uh, college of gps right you see so many gps senior people you know you look upon i have role models obviously i i told you one was my father but obviously more than that i have many others even in our college of gps right i look up to and when you come to think of it it is not a big deal that they are doing just go and sit with them and see how they look at their patients it's just this but they may have not known this as emotional intelligence but mind you this is what they have and this is how they make their name right so i believe that everyone chooses how to approach life if you are proactive you focus on preparing if you are reactive you end up focusing on repair right so obviously being proactive is better than being reactive right and uh, so i i think uh, i will just skip this so those are the main things i wanted to i wanted to narrate on the four sort of that ei framework right and uh, the last few slides so research shows that people improve their emotional intelligence most when they follow the following right when when the following conditions are present they have a strong motivation to learn or change emotional intelligent people have a strong learning motivation to learn or they keep on learning so that is something important for doctors right it's a, we are in a field that we need to continuously update they practice new behaviors consistently you now this emotional intelligent people i mean i mean i have seen people very senior gps how i mean i admire them right basically i don't want to mention name they still go for cmes they still i mean they don't need to right practically basically they see 100 to 150 patients a day they have made their money right i mean i mean even i don't actually go for all cmes but i i watch them i was like what, why what why does he has to go and do all these things they still update their knowledge right i have seen some people when the medical reps come right this is something my dad did right he gets information from them reads about the drug and before prescribing but i don't do that i just ask them what it is and then if they see a bit of the things and then i change the drug if i want to change sorry yeah, the... yeah, just uh, just to remind you regarding the time because we will need to take some questions as well at yeah, the sure, end sure. so i'll finish it i'll, I'll finish it uh, just give about 5 6 minutes i'll finish it thank you so basically that's the thing practice new behavior and they seek feedback on their own behavior which is very very important you seeking feedback on your own behavior something like how to develop i'll quickly go through these are things that um, you know you can even google and see you know define who you are define what you want to be you know seek feedback 
identify behaviors you want to keep, you want to throw away, you know, identify behaviors you want to develop, experiment with new behavior, reflect on the outcome, you know, practice new behaviors. So these are things how you actually develop your emotional intelligence first. And now this is also another study which I want to quickly run through. In a company in, the, in America, they have done this thing and proven beyond doubt. You can see every single aspect from the CEO, managing director to the lowest executive have performed well when their emotional intelligence are more than others. From a manager having 77% to a CEO having 70% emotional intelligence are scores, right? Just want to show you, right? Uh, I think we'll leave this. This is like an action plan I did. The time will leave this. So finally, they say fulfilling nowadays, you, you must learn to maximize your EQ skills for those who blend reason and feeling achieve the greatest results, right? So just to recap, we just did what is emotional intelligence and just give a small idea on the impact of emotional intelligence in general practice and healthcare leadership and a small thing on emotional intelligence compared to the framework. By this, I'm sure... Uh, we as family patients, GPs, or any, any other field who is in the forum, or even as a leader, can kick out the I am from impossible and make it possible. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sabit, and uh, um, others for the opportunity. Uh, I hope I gave a, you know, a little bit of idea on this. I mean, because of the time, you can't go too much into it. But uh, yeah, Sabit, I think that's, uh, that's it from me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ajay, for that informative and enlightening uh, presentation. Um, I mean, there's a lot to cover. So you, you've really done your best in, in terms of squeezing it all in. Uh, and I think that's it's so important, um, the, the EQ factor in, in making uh, one uh, from a good doctor mm -hmm. to making them a great doctor. You know, and it's so important not only in patient-centered care, but also in part of teamwork. Uh, so I'd like to open the floor for um, questions now. <clears throat> We've got uh, until um, the others come up with some questions. There are a, a couple of questions. The first was um, uh, from uh, Aranti. Uh, is an unjustified in an unjustified situation, uh, and you are pushed to the core. Uh, how do you control your emotions in a busy scenario? Uh, I, I didn't get. Can you uh, tell it again, Sabi? Um, so the question was in an unjustified situation, and when you are pushed to the core how to control your emotions in a busy scenario. Yeah. So uh, now this is something that I, I, I told, I think, I think if it's Aranti, you know, basically, if you just go through that competency, uh, you, if you practice those things, I, I think there were two slides. One was how you identify the emotions, right? And how you make sure what the emotions are, understand and you regulate. That is one thing you should. This comes with practice. Second thing is, if you are aware of yourself and if you manage yourself better, obviously, you will obviously even a busy, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, time or whatever you, uh, you are telling, you can manage the emotion. So that competency, that's what I was uh, making you. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I didn't have much time to go a lot, but that is, that is how you can practice something to make sure that you don't react to all those emotions, even in a busy uh, part. And people who do that, who are very calm, just think of some people who are there, even if the world turns the other around, they're, they're not bothered, that type of attitude, that is how they have practiced that, how to control these emotions. And the emotional competence, self-awareness, awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship awareness. All right, thank you. And then the other question um, is, um, are there any resources available to an individual who is interested in developing uh, their EQ yeah, skills yeah, further? Yeah. Okay. Uh, answering that question, yes. There are uh, a lot of uh, uh, you know resources now. Uh, basically, from uh, you have emotionally, I mean, uh, in, in the best that I, that I felt and I refer is uh, Daniel Goldman. Now, Daniel Goldman is called the father of 
emotional intelligence right uh, then i gave you two names at the start right uh, uh, i can't remember two more two more names i gave at the start of this thing they are also quite popular but i of course uh, uh, go in with this daniel goldman you go to youtube uh, i of course actually don't read books i'm not a good reader i don't like reading much but i actually go into the youtube videos you have books but uh, you have enough resources when you go and search but he, daniel goldman was one of the main guys who changed my perception on emotional intelligence and one and i actually started uh, you know researching uh, practicing those in my life actually after looking at his stuff thank you thank you very much are there any questions in the audience anyone else has any questions for dr ajay yeah eugene here yes, uh, thank you very much ajay for your very comprehensive very wide far ranging topic uh, okay. lecture and thank you sabit for handling this uh, just a small thing i think we need to learn how to teach emotional intelligence to gps that is to adults in the in the in our school days when we were very young um, not when i was very young that's far to far uh, a very very long time ago but there have been uh, initiatives in schools to teach what is known as life skills mm. that covers a lot of emotional intelligence but we have not had an attempt at an adult level and uh, if i can share just one thought in the ethics modules in the ethics modules we have a kind of a, a discussion which is group discussions we break up people into groups and give them scenarios but in those scenarios we ask them to watch their emotions what are your feelings like and do and share your thoughts with others see oh. how you react to the others right so uh, that is a, in the ethics modules we do that because ethical issues are invariably very emotional con connected with religion and lots of other feelings so it's a very good uh, teaching model because more than learning ethics you learn to how to handle yourself and to be aware and the other way of course is again in our ethics uh, component in the portfolio we are beginning to ask people to do an audit of their practices and then to learn lessons of how they behave professionally with their patients so uh, the third the next method is of course the last one is to analyze situation can you mute yourself please amjad please mute yourself we can't hear dr eugene the 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 last method is to be able to reflect on situations they may be good they may be bad they may be unusual and they may be sad also so you if you write down documentation is important and if you write down what did i do right what did i do wrong why did i do something like this and that is another way of understanding yourself okay thank you Yes, sir. thank you so thank you for that thank you yes thank you uh, dr eugene for that uh, very important uh, point i think that's that's very useful and i think they should really look at uh, introducing that even at an undergraduate medical uh, level um and also part of the self awareness aj correct me if i'm wrong also comes from the 360 degree evaluation no yes. it's about yes. how others yes. see yourself you know yes. so that feedback is also correct. very very important, very important. And, feedback yeah exactly yeah. and then do that fine so um if there are no further questions um i would like to thank um, dr ajay jaisilan for accepting the invitation to conduct tonight's uh, session i would like to thank the audience for taking time out on a sunday evening um you know uh, to participate and our webinar administrators um for um, all the technical support and uh, i would hope to see all of you uh, for our december um webinar session which is scheduled to be on the 8th of uh, december uh, thank you everyone and have a good night thank you very much thank you very much abhit randi and the college of teachers for this opportunity